happened for the first six months is pro probably three or four millimeters totally, but I know we will just get approximately 50, 60 percent of the of this aim. So this is after six months when we scan for the second set of aligners, and this is the result. I think uh, the we, we will go back to this because this patient had a dried out slightly inflammated gingivitis here in the front due to the over eruption but if you look here it became much better because probably the lips was covering better so here we are scanning for additional aligners and uh, this was the start at the first set of aligners and uh, this was the aim and if we compare the start and the aim we probably got approximately 60 or 50 percent of the total intrusion of the upper incisor, but it doesn't really matter. I see apply, I see in this align or aligners as a tool, not an exact science, and especially not this animation. They are not anything but animation. During the second set of aligners, I made a, a new clean check, and this was the aim. Uh, I aim at an overbet at zero millimeters and we're going to take a look what we are planning to do. So we are addressing just the four incisors and we are also trying to derotate 23. So the first set we had 30 aligners and then we have additional 20 aligners, totally 50. So uh, this is after 12 months of treatment. So this is the aim after the second set of aligners, and this is, is the outcome. And now it starts to look quite okay. So this is the amount of intrusion we got after um, 12 months of treatment. And at least it looks like we got the desired treatment goal. So this is start six months and after one year. And I think to doing selective intrusion with fixed appliance, of course it's possible, but you have to work with auxiliaries uh, and you have to probably put some tads. And this is quite easy to do with aligners. So this is something we are looking forward to work much more in the future with. So that was everything about deep bites. We're going to take one step further. Unfortunately, we orthodontists tend to sometimes move teeth out of the bone and create gingival recessions. And Renkema and co-workers published in the um, Journal of Clinical Periodontology in 2016, and they stated that orthodontic treatment and or the retention phase may be a risk factor for development of labial gingival recession. And the teeth that is most affected is the mandibular incisors that seems to be the most vulnerable. And uh, luckily, we are trying to move some of the teeth into the bone again. This is a patient who had two previous orthodontic treatment in Russia before she moved to Sweden. And she recognized that she started to have a gingival recession at 31. And if we look at this picture here, you can see that the root is outside the bone and the, it's bulking out. So the aim of this treatment was to torque 31 into the bone again. So um, the panoramic x-ray shows that he is uh, quite healthy otherwise. And these are after re removing the existing retainer. So this was the start when scanning and this was the aim when we used a power ridge to be able to torque the teeth. And um, a power ridge is a pressure point to be able to move the, the root into the bone again. Uh, and this was the start, and this is after six months. And during the first set of liners, we tried to address just 31 to selectively move this into the bone. And if we watch on the lower pictures here, I think we could see that actually the bulky root here sticking out of the bone is now more in a more secure place. But we aim to do 
another set of aligners and here we have the start and we have the aim of the first set of aligners and then we have the outcome and as normal and as always we did not get everything we aimed for so we made a new aim where we even overcorrected even more and we also uh, did not use a power wedge this time we used a, a standard attachment to get a good grip the problem with power wedges is sometimes they squeeze the teeth out of the retainer so sometimes it's good to have an attachment instead so this was a start and this was after uh, the first 23 aligners when we scanned for another set and this is the post treatment and in the second set of aligners we tried not only to torque 31 we tried to torque all four incisors to be on the secure side so she won't have any continual recessions in the future and this is uh, post treatment and at this day we also took away the uh, standard attachment that's why we have a slight bleeding here but i think we made a reasonably good job moving the teeth back into the bone and uh, my periodontist which i send uh, referrals to make gingival grafts he tells me that he will much rather do a graft in this position than this position because we have a better prognosis doing it here when the teeth are in the envelope so these are the start and this is the post treatment and actually we're doing quite a lot of these uh, treatment retreatment of gingival recessions uh, this is another case with a lot of gingival recessions um, and it's very important when you make your treatment planning to be aware of that the scans is only the teeth that are accurate the soft tissue is just an approximation so it's a very good idea to sit with the actual slides where you see the soft tissue to be able to make the treatment plan and when planning this uh, teeth tooth here, you can't expand too much. You have to add a lot of root torque to be able to torque these tooth. And this patient is actually from uh, my colleague in the practice, Diana Guerrero, and she made a fantastic job moving and torquing 23 into the bone again. And then the patient is referred to, for a gingival graft. And I think the prognosis for the graft is going to be much better than placing a graft in this situation. So, I'm going to start to speak now for a bit about treating open bites with Invisalign. And this is probably the part I'm most enthusiastic about. Uh, unfortunately, we see a lot of open bites in the practice. And in Maya's case here, she has an open bite in the front she has an early orthodontic treatment and the last thing you want to do in a case like this is to extrude the upper incisors even further because she's already showing a lot of gum and a lot of teeth so the treatment options here is to intrude posterior teeth to let the mandible to outer rotate and then we have two options either we send the patients for orthognatic surgery to do the for one osteotomy or we do an orthodontic solution i used to work with tads and gosh gary and a fixed appliance and do a lot of intrusion and molars and it was quite successful but it was a lot of work i couldn't delegate anything so if it's possible to do this with aligners uh, i will be more than happy so this is still Maya. She is a slight skeletal open bite, not too major, she's quite moderate. She has early orthodontic treatment. We need to close the spaces and we need to intrude the molars with the liners to be able to let the mandible to outer rotate. And this is the keflometrix. And she is a little bit long face in the lower facial height. And this is Maya. She's still under treatment but we are working with intrusion and molars and i think this is a very good proof that we are not extruding incisors 
We are just working with the molars. We still got some work to do. But I think when we come this far, we're going to get, do the rest because the, the more difficult part is already done. And this is Elizabeth. It's a colleague of mine. She was offered by maxillary orthogenetic treatment, uh, but we intruded molars with Linus. She's still under treatment. And we got the intrusion part, and now we're working with um, class 2 mechanics and class 2 elastics to improve the sagittal relationship. And this is another patient, which I'm going to talk a little bit more later, who had several problems. She had an open bite, and she had a gene value session. Somebody has moved the tooth out of the bone, and also some other problems. And this is Monique, who I was going to tell you about a little bit later, before and after treatment of the open bite. And this is actually Monique again. And what we do, we try to intrude posterior teeth tooth by tooth to correct the open bite. And I also tell uh, Invisalign not to extrude upper incisors. And 